Hey y'all, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I'm Aaliyah and today we are going to do something a little different. So I want to introduce my new segment to you. My segment is called Remember Me. Okay, now I do, y'all know when situations happen, like we see uh, tragic situations on the news or in the newspaper, um, on the internet and things like that, you know, it becomes the talk, the talk of the town, the talk of the house, the talk of the work um, place or whatever. But you know, as time goes on, we naturally begin to forget. Not that we forgot, forgot, but it got covered up with something else basically, because it's something different happening every day. So I just wanted to start this segment to kind of bring light to the certain situations that happen. Now, it won't always be bad things, Sometimes it will be good. Sometimes it will be, um, you know, I also want to do specials like for Black History Month. I want to do a segment like that month is going to be dedica dedicated towards Black History, obviously. Um, different situations and stories and, you know, bring into light different um, motivators. I call motivators Black History motivators and, you know, their stories and things like that, y'all. But yeah, um, I do want to say that this segment is not going to be, it's not going to prioritize a certain right a race it's not going to prioritize a certain gender um sexual orientation or things like that it's just literally whatever caught my eye at the moment you guys can also comment down below in the comments and let me know if any situations or any stories or anything like that that you like you guys would like to discuss and you can also discuss the situations that i'm talking about obviously in the comments and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already like this video if you like this video and like i said comment down below if you have any recommendations or pretty much anything else y'all now um i pretty much got into this because when i like when i watch true crime and um tragic stories and stuff like that y'all it kind of put me in a position of being grounded it put me in a position of being kind of humble and things like that because when i watch it when i'm done i'm like dang i can't believe that really happened you know sometimes it's like it's it's breathtaking what happens and you end up speechless but at the same time at the end of the day i'm always like dang i'm so thankful that that wasn't me i'm so thankful that i didn't have to go through that i feel so bad for the people that had to go through that the family of the fallen ones or whatever the situation is but i'm so thankful that it wasn't me and i'm thankful that i'm able to you know live on but it also puts me in a position to not be so naive in a world and things like that so it kind of helps me in a way but you know i know some people can't take stuff like this because it's a very heavy topic it's different than the stuff that i usually talk about i will still be talking about the stuff that i normally talk about doing my reactions and things but sometimes i just simply do not want to go to those channels and see what's going on over there and then just to get on here and do a reaction on it because it's kind of draining to watch them to be honest with y'all it's kind of draining to watch them when i can focus on situations like this that i'm going to talk about in a minute and it's a real life situation you know and yeah so yeah if y'all are interested like i said make sure y'all comment down, comment down below and yeah we're going to go from there so today i'm going to start with this case of um colleen ritzer now this happened about 13 not 13 in 2013 i believe now i will also be bringing a like a case up or whatever from different sites and things and just reading it to y'all and then do a little discussion at the end basically so basically this is gonna this is from vizaka um dot com v i z a v i z a c a dot com and yeah like i said her name is colleen richter she was beautiful y'all she was very beautiful so we're gonna go ahead and talk about the highlights of the case okay now um from november 21st 2013 according to an indictment fil uh, filed a massachusetts teenager was accused of murdering a respected high school math teacher he brutally raped the victim in sequence of unspeakable acts in a horrific incident okay now he was 14 years old and his name was philip chisholm y'all so he was arrested and charged with the murder of colleen ritzer um in danvers high school she was a Danvers High School um, teacher. She was 24 years old. 24 years old. She's 24. So she couldn't have been, like, teaching that long, y'all. Because, you know, you graduate around 17, 18. Um, she had to go to school after that and stuff like that and do everything she had to do to become a teacher. So she wasn't a teacher for that long. She was already young, 24. I'm 25. Shoot. So... 
Um, basically, Chisholm, Philip Chisholm, the 14-year-old student, he was charged with murder, aggravated rape, and armed robbery uh, related to the crime, right? Now, there's also a picture of him on here. Now, they do have a video, by the way. They have a video out. Um, I saw the video, but I don't know how to share it with y'all or anything like that. So, you'll pretty much have to go and type it in. And also, I understand that some people don't like seeing videos. Simply, it triggers some people. Um, me talking about it may be less triggering or traumatizing, but seeing a video, it could be traumatizing. But the video wasn't bad, though. It wasn't a bad video. So horrifying details of the case, y'all. So Ritzer's remains, that was the teacher, her remains were discovered on October 23rd in a heavily wooded area about 50 feet from the high school's um, athletic field. So according to the authorities, her throat was slit with a box cutter and she was hit in the face, y'all. So per the um, court records, Chisholm, that's the student, he followed um, Ritzer into a the restroom after putting on gloves which was seen on the school surveillance camera now that i did see that video now in the video it seemed like it was kind of choppy the one that i saw but basically you see her walking down the hallway she had on a purple shirt it looked like and then you see him he had on denim, denim pants and i forgot what else but he basically come out look down the hallway and then he goes back and then he come out put on gloves now this man changed his outfits about two or three times in the video and eventually he did come out and he had like a recycling bin, like a trash can, the one that you'll pull out in front of your house for the trash people to pick up. But yeah, the video is kind of choppy and I'll probably have to find another video, but yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> so according to the th authorities, um, yeah, he dragged her body from the bathroom in a blue recycling container on wheels and and he returned, he went home to change his clothes. Y'all, he went home, changed his clothes with all the blood on him. And he went to lunch at Wendy's. And then he went to the movies to watch Woody Allen film, a Woody Allen film at the Hollywood Hits or whatever, y'all. So he, then it wasn't far from his home, y'all. He lived with his mom and his two little sisters. But this man, he did what he did to her. Went home to change. He went to get some Wendy's and he went to watch a movie. But how do you sleep at night? I guess good. I don't, I don't know. So they were both reported missing that night. The teacher and Chisel was, uh, there was reported missing on the night of October 22nd at 5 a.m. On October 23rd, Chisel was arrested and was charged with first degree murder as an adult. Um, and her body was discovered a little while later. Now, he got caught because his mom called in because he was missing basically. So his mom called in looking for him. And that's pretty much how everything started, y'all. So it wasn't hard for them to figure out what happened after that. So the police and the prosecutors said they didn't know if Richards was alive or dead until they discovered the corpse and had no grounds of suspect Chisholm until they saw the security video of him entering the Danvers High School bathroom soon after Ritzer on the afternoon of October 22nd. They claimed it was a long time after he was spotted in Topsfield and as community um, protectors, they would have had no option but to approach him as he walked alone in the middle of the night on a dark and narrow section of Route 1 near Topsfield. Y'all, so he was outside just roaming the freaking streets, huh? So a knife was discovered. They found a knife when they um, stopped him. And according to the affidavit, a check of his bag later revealed the blood stained, blood stained box cutter, y'all. So he was walking around with a knife and he was walking around with the uh, the box cutter that he slit her throat with. So the girl, he referred to her as the girl, um, Chisholm reportedly said when asked where the blood came from. So they asked him where did this blood come from on his box cutter and he said the girl, the teacher. Um, so he also had um, the teacher's credit cards, her driver's license, and a pair of blue-green women's underwear y'all so he first claimed that he discovered the goods at the patrol at a patrol station a gas station and he later claims to have taken um them out of her vehicle they apprehended him so in an attempt to hide Colleen Richard's body, she was in a supine position covered with leaves and debris. Supine means on her back. She was laying on her back in the woods with leaves and debris on her. A sharp pointy object was used to rape her. I think they said it was like a tree branch or something like that and something else that I read, but I don't know that to be sure. Um, her throat has been slashed. A handwritten letter, a handwritten letter found beside the corpse was... Oh, 
they found the letter and they said, I hate you all. In the security footage, a green recycling bin was 20 yards away from her body. Um, clothing and other personal items were strewn about as were the blood soaked gloves he wore in the video. So basically, that it was a green okay so in the video because the video didn't really have a color as far as the trash the bin it did look dark though but and it uh they said it was blue but now they're saying it was a green recycling bin 20 yards away from her body and basically he just threw the clothes and everything else all over on the place but he took her license and her credit cards and everything else y'all so it said what prompted the investigation by the police so um diana chisholm that's his mom she contacted the police um because she couldn't find him basically she couldn't find him and she wasn't able to contact him like on the school campus or anything like that and then the phone's location was tracked with the help of his cell uh phone carrier ping ping was his cell phone carrier and according to authorities it was last located near the hollywood hits theater where he had bought a movie ticket before um the party so a second ping location yield no results. The news of his disappearance was widely dis... Okay, they so they put it all over the internet and stuff trying to find him. Mm -mm -mm. So a Danvers police officer watched security camera footage from the high school TV the next day and created a minute by minute... Okay, so basically if the mom didn't look for him they wouldn't have had a reason to look at the cameras and all that stuff and see all the all this stuff going on y'all so the mom she was looking for him and it led to everything because they started looking they started looking for his um location on his phone they started looking at the school cameras and everything y'all that is crazy like i can't imagine my son is not here i'm thinking the worst happened to him whole time he out there doing the worst y'all Mm -mm -mm. So the call came at 6.34 on October 22nd, and it was the first in a lengthy, lengthy string of context, an old style of investigation that helped solve a case that stunned the sleepy New England town of 26,000 people. The mother frantic call was one of the first details in a police affidavit detailing the murder of Colleen Ritzer. So it says inside the court later in 2015, the prosecution rested the case with painful evidence from the forensic doctor who performed the autopsy, McDougal outlined the prosecution's hypothesis about why Chisholm assaulted uh, Ritzer in a girl's restroom at the school on October 22nd, 2013, for the first time in open court. Mm -mm -mm. So basically, um, Chisholm, he was 14, he did the crime in the restroom, as they say. He strangled her, raped her, and stabbed her. Um, 24 years old. That is so freaking sad, y'all. But he stopped when a student entered the bathroom. Now, it was a question going around all over the place. And they were like, so nobody heard, nobody saw, nobody this and that. Well, the school was, it wasn't too many people in the school to begin with because it was after school was out. But it did say that a student did walk in, a girl did walk in, and she saw him. And she said that they questioned her, but she saw him, but she didn't see him doing all that that he was doing. She said she didn't know what was going on. She just walked out because it was a boy in a girl's bathroom, basically. So according to pathologist Anna McDowell, Donald, um, asphyxiation, that's when you like um, strangled and they cut off your circulation or, you know, some people, they get like stabbed or whatever and they kind of choke a little bit. It's basically suffocating. Yeah. And yeah, so asphyxiation and the 16 stab wounds to the neck, three of which damaged major blood arteries were the two causes of death. And they said it's impossible to figure out which one killed her first. Mm -mm -mm. But the um, pathologist did say she believed that she may have survived the strangling if she hadn't been, if she wasn't stabbed at first, y'all. So he basically was brought to trial as an adult. He bore capital punishment if convicted of first degree murder um, following rulings by the United States Supreme Court and the Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts, he could not receive a life sentence without the possibility of release as a minor. So he couldn't do it because he was a minor. But y'all, that's pretty much the story of Colleen and what happened, her tragedy and stuff, y'all. But I just, it's just, 
it's sad. Like it's sad. It's it's wild. It's sad as wild because the I I didn't see why that why he did it. I honestly didn't read on anything that said why he did the you know did what he did, but. Everybody is saying that she was so sweet. Everybody was saying that she was so nice. Everybody was saying they even made a movement like um I forgot what the movement was called, y'all. I'm sorry, but they even made a movement. Her one of her best friends made a movement and um I think it was like give back or pass it on or something like that, y'all. Pass the kindness or something like that. But they said she was so sweet and she was so kind and stuff like that, y'all. But it's just crazy to me. That's why we need to live our best lives at this moment. Like, we need to live it up, enjoy our lives. Not saying that we need to go out and just act a fool or anything like that. But we need to just enjoy our lives because, like I said, you don't know when it's the last time that you'll walk through your door. You don't know when it's the last time. You don't know when the last time is the last time, basically. And the situations, like, if it's not people doing it, it's us doing it to ourselves, is things that's just simply happening whether it's like sickness diseases and things like that y'all and you don't know really our lives are technically kind of in strangers hands when you walk into a store you don't know if somebody's coming into the store to rob the store you don't know if people have ill intentions you don't know what's on people's minds you don't really know what's going on or nothing like that all you know is that you need to go to school to go to work and some people just don't like you just because you smile today. They're not happy, so they don't like you. They don't want you to be happy either. Or whatever the situation is, like you just never know. Now, like, yeah, we argue with people. Some of us argue with people all the time. I don't really argue with people. But anyway, like having little petty arguments and stuff like that. Y'all holding up your life just to make the next person happy. Um, being in toxic situations, all that stuff. Like that stuff is not it. Because, like I said, you don't know when it's the last time you get to argue with somebody. You don't know when it's the last time you get to hug your kids. Anything. I don't know. I don't know, y'all. But, anyway, like I said, that's pretty much the end of this video, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. If you watched this long, comment down below if you have any recommendations based on this segment or anything that I can do to try to make this segment better or whatever the case is. I do want to make an intro and an outro for this segment and things like that. How often do y'all think I should post videos like this, like in this segment and whatever else, y'all? But I'll just see y'all in the comments. Yeah, I'll see y'all later.